Mobile device management is an administrative area dealing with securing, monitoring, managing and deploying mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets in a workplace. The intent of MDM is to optimize security and enhance functionality of mobile devices within the enterprise. Mobile device management allows distribution of uh, configurations, applications, patches for mobile devices. Ideally, MDM provides administrators with the ability to oversee mobile devices as easily as uh, desktop computers. I would like to focus on um, device management on Android OS, not only because it has the biggest market share, but also because it is open sourced. One of the main threats on Android OS are application based threats and network exploits. By application-based threats, we consider not only malicious software, but also bugs and defects in applications that lead to unintentional behavior. Network exploits take advantage of software flaws in mobile operating system or other software that operates on local or cellular networks. Loss of stolen devices are also one of the major mobile threats. These devices may contain personal or organizational sensitive data. We can name one more source of potential issues on Android devices – fragmentation. By fragmentation, we mean fragmentation of Android OS versions distributed by carriers and different vendors. Currently, according to Google Play market statistics, only a handful of devices running on the latest Android OS version. That means that we won't be able to leverage full functionality provided by Android SDK on all devices. And that's perfectly fine in case if you have limited requirements for managing applications and data on your devices. What if it's not enough? Well, as we mentioned before, the best part about Android is that it's open-sourced. Android Open Source Project is a software stack for a wide range of mobile devices and a corresponding open-source project led by Google. And that's exactly what we need to create a custom Android stack uh, to provide more means to manage our devices uh, and uh, implement features that we or our clients might require. Well, to be precise, if you want custom functionality, this is our only option because no other mobile platform provides us with such means. But what will be the benefits of using AOSP at the base of our product? Well, the, ma the main one is that actively developed. That means that you don't have to implement each feature. Uh, you can always pull the latest changes and features developed by uh, Google or other developers that push to AOSP repository and uh, merge it to your own uh, product. Also, you have a full uh, control over your product. That means that you uh, can prioritize your needs and functionality that you want to distribute with the next update. That means that your users don't have to wait uh, to, for someone to decide to push security update or not. You can do it yourself uh, if you want to. Uh, and one of the main points is that you can make changes on every single layer of Android stack. At the bottom of Android stack is Linux kernel. On top of it, we have framework level and application level. Application level and framework level are the levels we, will, we want to work with because we don't need to make changes to kernel level each time we want to implement or change to some feature. All applications work with data and in our case applications will work with sensitive data. Sensitive data may vary from business to business. That's why each company must tailor their uh, policies to suit their needs and uh, possible security threats to better protect themselves. But what does it mean to tailor policies? For example, it can be just as simple as setting uh, password policies like complexity or type of password. But what if you want to make uh, some features that restrict users in a different way? Well, this is uh, where AOSP project will be a good fit. We can restrict such features as Wi-Fi, NFC, Bluetooth, USB file transfer, location tracking, and even SMS and phone capabilities of the device. For all of this, we will have uh, some policies or settings on our backend, which will be later pushed to our device. So we would require some mechanism for sharing these settings and policies across our whole system. For this, we will implement system service, which will have one method, uh, is feature restricted, which will uh, indicate if some feature like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or USB file sharing uh, allowed for some specific app. Disabling such features as uh, Wi-Fi, NFC, USB, etc., have uh, something uh, in common. All they can be disabled by user from settings. So to find out how to disable them, all we need to do is go to the settings and check the relevant code on how to do it and just uh, implement it in our service. That was easy, right? But what if user goes back to settings and changes uh, the settings back or some other application with uh, appropriate permissions will change the settings back? Well, in this case, we would need to go and change uh, default APIs and how they work. 
In this case, we'll use our system service that we implemented before. And uh, for example, in case of Wi-Fi, we will check in method that enables it if it's allowed for this application. And if it's not, we will act accordingly. Location tracking is a bit different in this regard. For example, location tracking can be uh, fetched by using GPS or triangulating position uh, based on cell tower's position. So in order to restrict this feature, we need to find all corresponding methods that return relevant data and uh, using our service check if application is permitted to fetch this data and act accordingly. To restrict such features as SMS and phone uh, capabilities is a bit different to previous cases. SMS and phone capabilities uh, usually uh, set it during build time, not run time. And all we need to do is find places where these settings is uh, read into the system and swap it to our system service, which at this point will have a method to check if this feature is enabled for device. This way we will be able to restrict SMS, for example, and force your user to use some secure uh, communication tool that you provide. Basically, what we have now is similar to uh, runtime permissions that were introduced in Android 6. Of course, we should leverage existing uh, runtime permission introduced in Android 6 uh, when we will be building our custom uh, operating system. But what we wanted to show is that it's not very hard or challenging to implement something similar. It's actually really straightforward at some times. The final MDM solution will be a complex product. It will consist of simple, small and modular parts. The hardest part is to split complex features into simple ones. Every time we need to implement new feature, we need to carefully analyze it. We need to find minimum functionality that we can implement as fast as possible and uh, iterate uh, over it until we reach our final goal. In this manner, we'll spend less time and money for development of complex features and we'll make changes in the future more easily. The features that we discussed before implemented on framework and application level. But what about kernel and native library level? Well. These levels usually uh, are not the levels that we want to develop on, but they are very crucial in terms of uh, applying different patches uh, and security updates. You can change boot sequence of device or implement additional integrity checks uh, during the boot to ensure that your data is safe, or you can fix different bugs. So far we have been talking about positive sides of development project uh, based on AOSP, but there are some aspects that you should take into consideration. The first one is uh, warranty. To flash a new image to your device, you have to unlock device. What it means is that in most of the cases you will lose warranty for this specific device. Some devices you won't be able to use. Some devices are not unlockable, meaning that you won't be able to flash custom image on this device. Some are not lockable, meaning that uh, anyone will be able to flash anything they want on this device, leaving a huge security hole. There are some devices that don't have all parts of code released to open source, meaning that we won't be able to build custom image for these devices. We also lose Google Play services. Google Play services is proprietary software developed by Google that has a lot of functionality for applications to use. For example, Google Play Market, Maps, Notifications. A lot of third-party apps use these services uh, for different functionality meaning that if we install these applications in our custom build, they will crash. To uh, receive these services, we need uh, to pass uh, compatibility test suite. And after that, we will be able to apply to Google for receiving license for Google's Play services. That means that when we develop in, uh, in new features uh, for our custom uh, OS version, we should consider extending existing API instead of customizing it. This way will ensure that we pass compatibility suit. And the last one is the one we mentioned before. It's your full control of your product. It's a two-edged sword. You're not only getting all the benefits of it, but also you are now uh, responsible. You're responsible for providing with the bug fixes uh, of uh, your customers and also providing the latest security patches to your users. What I wanted to show you today is that you have much more options than you might have thought about how you can develop a mobile device management solution. And that building a project on top of AOSP can provide you with means to develop a product that you might have always wanted. Thank you for your attention. Stay tuned with MobiDev.